Today we're going to create an item drop and pickup system. If you don't have an inventory, if you don't have a pickup system, then you can get one from my GitHub for free. All these project files are on my GitHub, so feel free to download them uh, and follow along with this series. In order to learn how to do this, instead of just following along, what you should do is think about these steps that you see here and then try to do it on your own. And then if you don't, get it right then you can come back to the video so the first thing you should do is have an inventory and pickups if you don't have that you can get it for free from my github the inventory should have a remove item function you need to have a drop function somewhere in your code base that calls uh, the inventory to remove that item and then the drop function will put that item into the world in order to create an object in the world you need to have a prefab of that object so make sure you have a, a pickup prefab if you want to have unique pickups instead of just like a box or something then you need to model each and every one of your items or at least the ones that you want to have uh, be unique you need to model those and then have a reference to that model on your item scriptable object or whatever your items are contained in okay so stop the video work on that for 15 to 45 minutes and if you haven't created a, a good system or, or you just want to compare notes then come back the first thing I did was go to flaticon.com I wanted to get the UI out of the way so that I would have everything in place for the code so I typed in error and I downloaded the PNG that came up for that the first one that I thought was good make sure that you credit for example vectors market make sure you give credit to whoever you download from all I'm going to be doing in the following sequence is putting in the UI. All right, so what I did here was I went back to my item slot container. All right, so this is what shows up in my inventory uh, for each item that's in the inventory. Okay, so I've got a button in the middle there uh, where when you click on it, you use the button, but right now I'm adding another button. This button is going to be used for removing the item okay so what I always like to do is use the anchors in order to put it in the place that I want it and that way I don't have to worry about how it's going to scale it'll always occupy that portion of where the anchors are so you can see here it's about a quarter of the of the top part of this uh, button slot make sure that the icon that you downloaded is in sprite slash UI mode and then once you get that onto your button make sure you go into this little image part and click on preserve aspect and that way it won't stretch or skew in, in strange ways okay it'll preserve that aspect that you downloaded it with all right I'm gonna make sure this is on the right side and it looks good here I just want to tidy up and get the names right so that I can see them properly on my scripts so I'm going into our item slot UI here I'm adding the remove button Okay, you can see here on the left that there's these yellow marks where I've, where I've added these new things. So I've added that remove button and now I'm creating this event where whenever we click that button, we're going to fire off this event. And what that event is going to do, really we, we don't have to worry about that yet. Here we're just saying whenever that button is clicked, fire the event. All right? And you, you might not have seen this before, but what I'm going to use here is the lambda expression. And that's just that's just like creating a, a new function. Now we're going to check out what references this script, and we're going to go to our slot holder UI. Sorry, this is a little out of order, but we needed to get this done. Uh, this is the crafting slot UI. Now this uses the same item slot UI uh, for each item that's in the in the craftable items. What we need to do is have something different from the item slot UI because we don't want to remove crafting items from from the crafting inventory so the simplest way we're doing this is just if 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 the crafting item buttons don't have a remove button then there's no it won't it won't call any remove item function all right so this is pretty simple make sure that you have a separate prefab for crafting all right so now we can see that the items have here we go. The items have a remove button and the crafting items don't. Okay. Okay, sorry for jumping out of order like that. Now, remember that we have this item slot 
UI with uh, the on click remove event that's going to be listened to by our item slot uh, inventory excuse me our item slot UI so for each of those item slots we're, we're listening to the event and we're gonna call this drop item um, this drop item function okay and that takes in an item and that's going to send to the inventory It's gonna say inventory drop this item and we're just by default we're just gonna drop one okay so here's that function on the inventory if we don't have the item or we don't have that an amount of the item we're gonna go out of the, the function otherwise we'll remove it from the inventory and if we create items on remove then we will drop it by creating this pickup prefab we want to create this generic object three meters above and two meters in front of our current position with our rotation accounted for so that's why I'm using transform dot transform direction then we pass that item that we're dropping to the pickup and we set up everything we need to on the pickup script maybe that sounds complicated all we're doing is we're clicking the button we're clicking the remove button we're saying fire that event drop it from the inventory remove it from the inventory on this pickup script here's what we're setting we're setting the item on that pickup script so I'm dropping a generic prefab and I'm setting it via the inventory as the item that we're dropping now I'm going to show you this problem that I encountered as we click even if we just click once it looks like we're just dropping every single instance of the item that we have in our inventory and it, and it all happens at once they all come out at once so even though we're clicking once or at least to us it feels like we're clicking once the game is registering more than one click so what we want to do is set up a click buffer what I mean is if we've clicked once then we want to start a timer that says that if we've just clicked then we're gonna wait a couple of seconds or, or less than a second before the next click can be registered so once we fire that event that um, on click event if we can click then we're gonna drop the item and start the click buffer you'll see that this just solved the problem so I'll pick up some wood and then I'm gonna mash the click button and you can see that it's sequential let's take a quick review of what we've done so far okay we've gone into our item UI okay we've changed our item slot UI we've added this event when we fire that event from the remove button we're going to go into our item slot holder UI. Okay, so this is our inventory UI, which is an item slot holder. Each item slot listens to this on click remove event, and when we click it, we're going to drop the item, which calls drop item on the inventory. Okay, remember we have that click buffer. So if we can click, we drop the item from the inventory. If we have that item and that number of the item, we remove it and then if we are creating items on drop and we have a prefab a generic prefab to drop then we will create that prefab in the world and we will set the item on that prefab to be the item that we are dropping so let's take a look at that pickup what we're doing is making sure that the sprite corresponds with the item and that the item corresponds with the item okay so I'm gonna go ahead and pick up some items in here you're going to see me go to the shop and I'm going to I'm going to buy some items from the shop, okay? And then you'll see that when I drop them, they have the correct item. Now, in order to create custom items in the world that resemble the item that they're actually representing, we need to open our item script and we need to have a game object that we can use to reference that model and then a way to uh, get that reference from outside of our item script. So once you've got your model and, and it's created, you need to have a game object with a collider, a rigid body, and a pickup script. You need to, well, you probably want to organize your folders. So I created my own folder with all of my pickups. These aren't actual items, they're just pickups, okay? So it's not the thing that you're actually using when you click on it in the inventory, right? Go to your your scriptable objects and make sure to reference that prefab from the item scriptable object otherwise you won't see this item in the world so let's take a look at how we're going to use that prefab from the inventory okay I've, I'm gonna set this up so that it's a little bit easier to, to see what I'm doing I've got this game object that I'm instant that I'm instantiating and it's got the pickup script on it 
uh, regardless of whether it's a generic object or if it's the unique item that you've created, it needs to have that pickup script on it, okay? What I'm saying here is that if the item prefab is not null, that is if, it, if it's got that item prefab, the custom object that you've created, then we're going to instantiate that into the world. And if not, we're going to instantiate the generic prefab into the world. Either way, we need to make sure that what we're getting is the pickup script on there. And then once we have that pickup script, we'll set the item to it. Let's test it out. Now we know that the key has its own custom object. And now uh, because we have that custom object, it's going to spawn it into the world. I can't pick it up because I've got a problem with the colliders on it, and you'll see that in a second. I had another problem here where I didn't set the image properly. Now you're gonna see that I, that I bumped the key on top of the clock, and that's why I was able to pick it up. But the main problem was that the collider was not big enough, and you'll see me go over that again. Just make sure your colliders on your custom objects are big enough that you're player can actually hit them. Here you can see the root of the problem. I'm going to drop that key and you're going to see just how small the colliders are on both my player and on the object. So ideally your player has a, a collider that reaches all the way to the to the ground. Again it would also help to have colliders on your objects that are big enough to hit your player. To wrap this video up and make things a little bit prettier for that generic box we're going to go ahead and give it a, uh, a nice little texture here. I got that from Open Game Art from Loop from Rust LD. Okay, so this has a really nice uh, set of textures. It's got a normal map, a bump map, and then the normal text, the albedo texture. That looks pretty good. This will be used for any of those objects that don't have their own custom game. Uh, excuse me, their own custom 3D model. Hopefully you guys liked the video. It was a long time coming. I, I needed to get this done for the inventory. It was a suggestion from someone on a, on a different video. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Like the video and please subscribe to the channel if you want to continue to see content like this. Thanks a lot. See you later.